I don't know, for the first or the most stark time in this little, you know, you know, uh, adventure you're taking me on. Have I noticed? Yeah, I like, think the, well, it's Chance Funk Odyssey. Or yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> That's it. that is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Audio Files. I am Andy, and that's John, and we are here to discuss some music. In particular, a song that John has selected carefully for the listening audience that I will be going out and giving a listen to, uh, my reaction in real time, and then I will be coming back and jawing it up with John about that song. John, <laughs> there you go, excellent exemplar. Uh, that's what John looks like when he and I are talk talking off screen. Uh, John, what um, what band, what track? So we're going back to that jazz funk odyssey that we started many moons ago, and we're dipping into the REM well. Um... I guess jazz funk <laughs> odyssey for sure. <laughs> okay. So yes, it's uh, um, so it's another one, and we're going through the albums chronologically. So now we hit their fourth album, um, Life Switch Pageant, and a track that I have selected. There's some really, really, really good stuff on this album, which I'll get into. But there's one really obvious song, and that is Fall On Me. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a listen. I don't, it does, the name isn't ringing any bells. It, I don't I don't know, though. But I'll, I'll go off and give it a listen, and and I'll let you know what I think. We got two guitars here. What they lay down? I guess they just lay down two tracks, and it sounded like one of them like was electric, and then the other track was acoustic. I don't know. Let me take that back. I'm not sure. There's a Sky. All right, moment of truth here. I've I've definitely heard this song. Like in passing, I never sat down and was like, "All right, I'm listening to Fall on Me" by REM. But I know I've heard this before. That rhythm, um, the swaying, like seesawing motion of the of the music and the the delivery, the vocal delivery by Stipe. Yeah, this is this is familiar to me. But this is my first time giving it like a true, honest listen. I can tell you that. I just know I've heard that before and been like, oh, that's lovely. And I knew it was R.E.M., but I didn't know the name of the song or anything. Okay. All right. We are focused. We are listening to this. Tell the sky, tell the sky. to be him and mill like stipe and mills and their harmonies sound really good we've talked about them in the past and i've admired the harmonies and the way they've sounded in past tracks we've done but this is really good i don't, I don't know if it's the if the harmonies are sort of amplified by the um by just the rhythmic nature of the song and it lends itself to that and maybe it's the synergy that's making it stand out to me uh, but I really, really do like that. Yeah, I'm going to take that back a little bit. Even the, I just love the pre-chorus into the chorus of this so far. I tell the sky. Towered for sight is an idiot's 
guitar is so beautiful in there. Um, and speaking of the guitar, and and honestly, I think the same could be said for Stipe as well on this track. This, to me, sounds like slightly different step, uh, like a different direction that they're going with their sound. I don't know. Um, it still s sounds like they're not sacrificing like who they are as artists or or anything like that. It still sounds very much like the REM from previous stuff. But this sounds like, I don't know, dare I say slightly more accessible. Uh, the guitar, um, I don't know, it's a little brighter and clearer and less, I don't know, twang jangly, uh, if, <laughs> if that makes sense, probably doesn't. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's I don't know. I'd say a little bit cleaned up. A little bit cleaned up. I don't want to say polished, but they did a little sanding around the edges at the very least. Uh, Stipe's vocals are more forward. I can make out a lot of what he's saying, although I don't know exactly what this is about, but I can hear a lot of his words, and that's definitely a step in the right direction from some of R.E.M.'s earlier stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, let's, let's check this out. I don't know. My supposition could be completely off, but... Yeah, short little number, but man, that, um, just the poppy nature of that, I guess it's just the bounce of that chord, the pre-chorus and the chorus are like earworms. It's no wonder that, um, though never really sitting down and, in, and listening to this with any intent, um, that just having heard it in passing, that that's would have stuck with me so much that just hearing it for two seconds brought it back right the memory of having heard it um so it left its mark on me even though i didn't <laughs> i wasn't aware that it had uh so that's got to say something about the song right um yeah the the harmony's amazing the the lovely electric guitar work um was so clean and clear and crisp uh this was a really really fun and interesting listen interesting in that it if this is the first and perhaps most stark um, example of them moving in a, or progressing, I guess, in their sound than I've heard in any of the previous tracks. Um, maybe I'm right about that, or maybe it's just this track, or it's just my ears and my experience just listening to this once the whole way through. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, John can fill in the blanks with me uh, on that, as well as just the lyrics in general. I know there's a lot of allusions to what seemed like aerial things like sky and things. If you, something falls in all likelihood coming from above you, i.e. the sky, um, towers reaching up to the sky, feather, I think an allusion to a feather. So they fall from this. So I don't know. I don't know what this is. <laughs> this his type is doing here with this metaphor um, or motif lyrically that he's got here. But, uh, Hopefully John can fill in the blanks. I'm going to get back to him now in hopes that he does. So, here we are again. Yes, what here we are. You? I say that I knew this song. 
I didn't know that I knew it and I didn't know it really well. Obviously I didn't even know the title, but you can't, and I'll expand on this probably a little bit later, but you can't hear that pre-chorus and chorus even in passing and not have it even subliminally, like you don't even, you're not even aware of it, like have it sink its teeth into you because like right when that pre-chorus started and it became a little bit that rhythmic, like, seesawing and just the jaunty nature of it i was like oh shit i i know this now um but i never really gave it get, sat down and gave it like an invested listen uh like i did here and i this is a perfect like vehicle for me to do that and i'm glad that i have because it's good to like be able to put a name to this song i always knew it was an rem tune because you can just hear rem and you're like yeah I, that's um uh stipe's voice everything and even down to the instruments and the way they're played that has their own quintessential sound so yeah um it was good to like unmuddy the waters and really like let this thing like hit me and it was uh, a lovely little experience a very short song um but there was some the way it started off with this really pretty dual guitars uh was kind of interesting for a band with one guitar uh so i wondered how they did that um you know i'm sure it was just two tracks laid down, but when they play it live, how they do it, do they have someone else come out and play either the, I would assume the acoustic guitar in this bit, but the acoustic guitar, the way the acoustic guitar and electric guitar spoke to one another was really, really, really pretty. Um, and it does it throughout the song, but I almost wish that they would have like dragged that intro out to like a 20 second mark or something like that, because it's so fleeting. Like you hear it and you're like, oh, that's pretty two guitars, acoustic, electric. And then boom, you get stipe, you get drums, you get bass. So it, it it sort of like is just gone. The moment like you realize you're having the thought about it and enjoying it, it leaves. So um, I would have, could have dealt with that for, you know, another 15 seconds or so. Um, but yeah, the, and then I wrote, yeah, this is the moment of truth. Yeah. By the time the pre-chorus hit, I realized I had heard this song before. There's something about the upbeat rhythmic patterns, uh, of this portion and the chorus as well. that give this song so much life, um, like walking on air. Uh, and that is, uh, the bit that resonated with me when I heard it before, like it's, it instantly spoke to me and I guess in a weird way, that's the sign of a really good song. It's it's shame on me for having not gone out and been like, what was that song? Or waited around to hear the name of it after it played. But for it to um, almost, I guess I, I, I'd say I forgot about it, but I didn't because the moment I heard it, I remembered it. But it's one of those things where you don't even know you remember something. And then when you hear it, and that has to be so good because God knows when the last time I heard the hook to this song was. And it just instantly, like the flame reignited instantly. And it was great. I loved it. Um, the, the production of this track seems like a step forward. And I know that the pattern that you have been giving this out to me is, is in a very chronological fashion. Um, but perhaps for the most, I don't know, for the first or the most stark time in this little, you know, you know, uh, adventure you're taking me on. Have I noticed? Yeah, I like, think the, well, it's Jazz Funk Odyssey. Or, or yeah, yeah. Like that, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. That is the word I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it it was. I don't know. The production level was a little like I I didn't. They lost no street cred. They lost none none of their like artistic bona fides by 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 taking sort of this evolutionary step on the chart. They they're not polished. There's just the edges are sanded a little bit. The guitar is a little less um, off kilter, a little weirdy. It's it's a little bit more clean and pristine sounding in its playing. Um, the vocals are more forward and have and have and are stepping into that Stipe finding his clarity uh, point in their yeah. you know sort of uh, existence. So I it, and. and I don't know if this was the intent, but it comes off as a bit more radio friendly and accessible when you, when these bits are the things that get tightened up. Right. So, but again, I say that without being like, Oh, this is their, you know, you know, their, the U2 moment where they step out from being like a cool indie band into the stadium. It's not that it's not that stark of a, you know, but you hear it, you can definitely recognize it, especially having listened to the stuff recent, very recently that you've provided me, you can hear it more evident, you know, you can, uh, the contrast is there. Um, also, and we've talked about this in previous songs before where this, the, the song is ripe with really good harmonization, but the harmonies in this song, 
I think are even superior than those examples where when we did my review, they stuck out to me and they were, they bore mentioning and we discussed them. This iteration of their harmonization is the best that I've heard thus far. Um, there, it, it, it's, they're capable when they put their minds and voices together of really doing some interesting stuff vocally. And there's this almost seesawing or like, um threads in a quilt how they're woven over top and underneath of one another um and there that is going on here um i think it's the best version of their harmonies that i've heard before assuming that this is mills because don't some of the other guys do backing vocals as well so under that assumption um that's who i always think of when i think of harmonies and rem i don't know why but yeah this sounded Amazing. Really, really love this. And as nondescript as they are, I loved the lyrics, buy the sky and sell the sky. Um, I don't know exactly what that means, even in like the context of the rest of the words, but that seems to be a, a, a commonly, I think they, he plays with the words thereafter in that little stanza about buy the sky, sell yeah. the sky. But that remains, I think, the constant that just and the, the starting point of each of these um, stanzas. Uh, and they, I don't know. I just found them evocative and interesting and broad enough that you can cut your mind can kind of go anywhere with them. Um, and while we're on the topic of lyrics in the sky, for that matter, it appears that it is the focus or at very least the main metaphorical through line in this song. The, there are several references to the sky and rain, which comes from the sky, even to things that reach the sky, towers and buildings and others that can gently fall from it. Feathers. Um, and yet with all of that, uh, or perhaps because of all of that, I'm not sure what he's talking about here exactly. Like what is the metaphor? Like there, I know he's the, I, I know the objects that he's using to convey it, but I don't know what it is he's conveying. And that's, I guess what I'm grappling with. Um, regardless of that, I, I love the bounce and the rhythm of this track. Uh, love the vocal delivery, love this evolutionary step takes nothing away from what came before, but it helps you appreciate uh, what I just heard and probably some subsequent stuff that you, you've yet to introduce me to. Um, and some of the stuff that I already am familiar with, because it's right around this time in the next album where I, I think I start to become more familiar with R.E.M.'s oeuvre, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, it, it was a really enjoyable. And like I said before, for, um, for R.E.M., I guess at this juncture in their existence, a very accessible song and radio friendly song. And I liked it a lot. Yeah. I would say in terms of like early REM, IRS years, etc., this is about as anthemic, well, perhaps one I love, but it's like the version of later, like losing my religion or everybody hurts or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, it's just one of the real standout songs that um, all the indie kids loved from that period. So, yeah, as I said, this is from Lightswitch Pageant, their fourth out studio album. Just for, um, as we've said before, we've done other R.A.M. tracks. We've gone into all the band. Um, I can't remember if I've put a playlist up, but I'll put a link anyway in the descriptions about previous stuff so you can go and check all that out. But just to recap the band, Mr. Michael Stipe, the lead vocals. Um, Mike Mills, bass guitar, backing vocals. Um, on the album, he also plays piano, pump organ, and he has lead vocals on one song. Oh, wow. Which I'll get into a sec. Peter Buck, guitar, and banjo on a different track. Um, Bill Barry, drums, and backing vocals. So for this album, um, R.E.M. chose Don Gaiman um, to, to produce the album. He's known for his work mostly with John Cougar Mellencamp. I believe they recorded their album in... Um, Mellon Cab Studios. Um, and what he did was he moved them from their more, as you said, like that obscure and dense sound, college sound of their early albums into a more accessible sort of uh, rock influence quality. And he was particularly great at layering songs as well, which they found amazing. And that's he'd be retaining clarity and, and their, as you say, they're sort of roughish edges, but not really rough but yeah anyway. yeah exactly i wanted to be yeah, i didn't right. want i was trying to figure out what how to word that because it's not like like i try to avoid polish because it doesn't sound super overproduced and super yeah. radio friendly but from what it was to this there is a market difference and i don't know how to explain it other than <laughs> to yeah. say i mean clarity is probably the thing isn't it it's just 
just clearer what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like they turned every knob up just a little bit to get everything up yeah. and a little bit more in the and and again the guitar and balanced as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some real clarity in the guitar versus some of the I jangly-ish stuff that you hear in sure, earlier yeah. iterations. Yeah, so the album title, Flightage Pageant, is based obviously on a very old English expression. However, according to Peter Buck, they took it from the 1964 film A Shot in the Dark, which is a Inspector Clouseau film, but is non-Pink Panther film. It's one of these offshoot ones, mm. Brick Hetland. And um, the, the scene is Inspector Clouseau opens a car door and then he falls over into a fountain. And uh, the female character says, you should get out of these clothes immediately. You'll catch your death. You'll catch your death of pneumonia, you will. And Clusa says, yes, I probably will. But it's also all part of Lazarus' pageant, you know? <laughs> and that's where they took the title for the album from, from that, apparently. They removed the apostrophe, though. So it's life's all, you know, without the apostrophe. And Peter Buck later said, we all hate apostrophes. Michael insisted, and I agreed, that there's never been a good rock album that's had an apostrophe in the title. So there you go. Um, the cover of the album is actually the top half is uh, Bill Berry. Here's a picture of him. And the bottom half is Two Bisons, um, which is kind of supposed to signify the environmental theme. Um, they were very early adopters of uh, that sort of green movement. And the album, obviously, that followed a couple after mm -hmm. this. So um, Gaiman had real some real positive influences. And one of the things particularly was encouraging Michael Stipe to uh, develop his vocal um, talents during the sessions. And it's kind of viewed as a watershed moment within their sort of, you know, uh, catalogue. is the record where um, Stipe definitely gained significant confidence as a front man um, and began to enunciate his lyrics. But also as a lyricist, you know, he's, he's grown another couple of steps up mm. and there's a number of key tracks on the album which um shows his his interest in um politics ecological issues so um like that in this song the apocryphal tale of uh galileo dropping feathers and lead weights in the lean tower of pizza to test the laws of gravity um Cuyahoga refers to a heavily polluted Cuyahoga river that flows into lake erie in cleveland ohio mm. And um, referring to the several occasions, particularly in the late 60s, when the river actually caught fire due to pollution. Um, Lightsuit's Pageant at the time was the band's most su commercially successful album in the States. It picked at number 21 in the uh, Billboard charts, which again is considering what happened before we talked about. That's a real, again, another massive step forward. And it was the, ba the band's first gold record in the States. And in the UK, the album got to number 43 as well. Um, there's some amazing songs on this album uh, it's a real really 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 strong album and a lot of fans favourite um, interestingly the A side is called Dinner Side and the B side is called Supper Side mm. and it starts with a cracker begin the begin these days is fantastic fall on me Hyena's great as well then there's this weird sort of muffled waltzy type number called Under the Bunker, which only lasts a minute and a bit, which is really odd. Then Flowers of Guatemala, which is one of the really great sort of sleeper songs in R.E.M.'s back catalog. It's an amazing song. I believe it's great. What do we give it away? Just a touch, Swan Swan Age, and then Superman, which was a cover um, um, by a band called The Clique from 1969. So they released two singles off the album. Fall on me, which is that seventy-five, so forty-five there, um, and then Superman as well, which as I said, uh, Mick Mill sings a lead vocals on, and Stipe does backing. Um, it's a real good song as well, real, real good. So according to Metacritic, it received universal acclaim and got a score of ninety-three, mm -hmm. which Hootsman is pretty high. Um, the Guardian said at the time it may represent the band of their absolute zenith, imbued with a swaggering confidence, absence from its murky predecessor, which I also love. Um, they also singled out Fall On Me for its beautiful um, opacity and the sumptuousness of its melody. Um, Uncut argues that um, it represents R.E.M. 
embracing that. I like this because it's I'm not sure I hundred percent agree with it, but what they're saying, but it's interesting. It says REM embracing the mainstream. For the first time it occurred to REM that they had a constituency. And indeed it might be possible and desirable to build on that with an album where every note fizzes and crackles with the urgency of people who've made their minds up. Which again, for, you know, from uh, Fables of Reconstruction, the difference is stark, you know. Yeah. Mm. So um the lyrics and the song. Oh, yeah, the lyrics first. So there's the problem. Feathers iron, bargain buildings, weights and pulleys. Feathers hit the ground before the weight can leave the air. Buy the sky and sell the sky and tell the sky and tell the sky. Don't fall on me. And it's where Mills is doing his bit. What is it up in the air for? Fall on me if it's there for long. Fall on me. It's over. It's over me. There's the progress we have found. And again, in this second verse, Mills sings different lines in a different melody as well. Um, was it? Yeah. So there's the progress we have found when the rain. A way to talk around the problem when the children rain. Building towered foresight, keep your conscience in the dark. Is it anything at all? Damage the statues in the park. Buy the sky and sell the sky and bleed the sky and tell the sky. Don't fall on me. What is it up in the air for? Fall on me if it's there for long. Fall on me. It's over. It's over me. Fall on me. And it goes into the bridge. Well, I and this bit Mills sings on his own. Well, I would keep it above, but then it wouldn't be sky anymore. So if I send it to you, you've got to promise to keep it home. And then back to start. Buy the sky and sell the sky and lift your arms up to the sky and ask the sky and ask the sky. And then the closing bit. All three of them are singing. So Stipe and Mills and Barry. Um, fall on me, what is it up in the air for? And Barry sings, it's going to fall. Fall on me, if it's there for long, it's going to fall. Fall on me, it's over, it's over me, it's going to fall. Don't fall on me, what is it up in the air for? It's going to fall. Fall on me, fall. you get the idea. And it just goes fall on me and, and to the end. Um, so the subject of the song, it's got it's two songs in one, maybe three. The subject of the song was initially about acid rain and its effect on the environment. Hence, the the, the first line of course, "Don't fall on me." Um, but and but didn't there affect... some other allusion to like damage done to statues and park or something? Yeah, like yeah. That? So when it first appeared in live concerts, the song had, in '85, um, they were touring before they recorded the album in '86. Um, the melody they had a different melody, which was entirely rewritten when it was recorded for the for the album. So the counter melody in the second verse is actually the song's original tune and features the original Acid Rain inspired lyrics. So I'll just go back to them, the bits that were sung. When the rain, when the children rain, that's R-E-I-G-N. Keep your conscience in the dark, damage the statues in the park. So that's the Acid Rain stuff, which is interesting. And if you notice in the chorus when they're singing, Mills is actually singing a completely different melody to the song and to Stipe's vocal melody. So you've got three melodies going on at once, mm. which makes it quite complex, but it's so well put together, you don't particularly notice it. It just feels swelling and uplifting and airy and all those things you said. Um, so take all this with a pinch of salt for a start. According to Michael Stipe, Follow Me is not about acid rain. It's a general oppression song about the fact there are lots of causes out there that need a song that says, don't smash us. And specifically, there are references to the leaning tower of Pisa and the guy dropping weights and feathers. Um, so as I said before, you've got Stipe and Mills doing their wonderful bit, and it is their best harmonies today and probably, you know, ever. Um, and then... You know, Bill Berry to Johnny and who is gonna fall right at the end. This is a real favorite of mine. Um it's in my top three REM songs, I yeah, should say. I can see why. And it changes all the time, but you know, it's there and thereabouts. So it's a real Bobby Dazzler, as they used to say. Um and the album itself is this was around the time I started getting into REM. And this album was huge within our circle of, of friends and stuff. And it was uh, this cool American college sort of rock stuff that was had this in, in the tinge to it as well. It was a bit different. Mm. Um, and it really was great. And 
and you know, snaffled up as much as you could of their stuff because it was it was awesome. Um, yeah. So that's why I picked it. And I thought there would be a danger that you may have heard it before because out of their early stuff, there's like two songs which are really, which we know, uh, South Central Rain, which you already knew, and this yeah. one. Yeah. And then stuff off the next album as well, obviously, because that did hit the radios in a big way. Um, and I've got a funny story about that, but that'll be for next time. <laughs> the only other thing is... Um, I'm just happy there's going to be a next time. Yeah, the only other thing is the video. It's hard to get a video that wouldn't be blocked. Mm. If you do get a chance, if you're so inclined, you sell to the viewers, check out the original video. It was actually directed by Stipe. And it's got these lovely block letters of just prominent words. So there's a problem we have found. And, and it's got this, like, it's almost like this home city footage of stuff mm -hmm. going on. And these are quite often, I think they're orange letters coming up. Could be wrong. But it's a really sort of, um, it's a great video to watch, actually, without much actually going on here. It's just satisfying. Nice. It fits it perfectly. So, yeah, okay, I shall um, wrap things up. Hey, thanks for listening to Sunday. Thanks for offering it up. Folks out there, tell us what you think of this song, Fall On Me, the album, Last Rich Pageants, any of uh, uh, REM-related insights or stories. We always love to hear from them um hear about them from you if you like this please hit the like button obviously um if you haven't subscribed please do and um help uh, support the channel as we get move onwards and upwards i'd uh, be much much appreciated really well um that being said thanks again so much for watching and join us in and then indiscriminate amount of time for the next rem song whenever that may be um i just wait for the voices in my head to tell me it's time um, <laughs> so much of what we do is based on the voices in your head <laughs> voices. um that being said thanks again so much and we'll see all of you on the next episode of the audio files see you guys <laughs>